one of the things we do know is that um, the last 20 years or so, the westerly winds in the southern hemisphere have been pushing towards Antarctica. And they've been pushing south quite a bit. And there's a number of reasons for that. One of which is the ozone hole depletion. Um, but that's slowly recovering. But the downside, the bad news for us, is that uh, greenhouse gas levels, carbon dioxide, methane, a whole range of others, have been increasing. And that's changing the heat, uh, of the amount of heat in the atmosphere, but it's also changing the distribution of heat. And the result is that those westerly winds are continuing to go south, even with the ozone hole recovering. Now that's having a whole load of knock-on effects. It's changing the delivery of rainfall to Australia. It's bringing warmer air further south. And it's also changing the ocean circulation, which is leading to some warming around the Antarctic coastline. So we're doing a variety of things. We're looking at the wildlife. Uh, one of our team members, a lady called Tracy Rogers, has been doing this fabulous work where they've been looking at the sizes of the penguins, but particularly the seals from the samples that were collected a hundred years ago to those we find today. And what Tracy's found, this isn't even published information, is that the seals are about 10% smaller today than they were a hundred years ago. Now one of the key areas that she hasn't got data from is Commonwealth Bay, so Tracy's very keen, she's taking a team with us and we're going south into that um, Commonwealth Bay to collect samples. And we can do a variety of different things, including biopsies by, uh, they're shooting pellets into the, uh, into the um, animals to collect samples, to get an estimate of uh, what diet they've, they've got now, because we think that maybe it's a 10% change in size is related to diet. But we also want to see what effects for having those westerly winds in the sub-Antarctic islands, which are the islands that basically straddle about 50 to 54 degrees south. And because the shifting winds are going south, they're bringing warmer air there, the environment is changing, the plants are changing, and the wildlife, uh, the animals are um, changing in their population dynamics. And also other things look like they're jumping across. Things are, uh, some organisms look like they're migrating from Australia and New Zealand, or might be, down through the islands. And one of the research questions we're interested in is, are they going to be able to make the jump across to Antarctica? If these trends continue, is that going to happen? A few things look like they've already done so. So we want to have a look at that and see, actually sort of get some more baseline data. Now, we're only going down for six weeks, so we can't hope to do nearly as much as what Mawson did. But we do have some advantages. Technology allows us to do other things which you couldn't do 100 years ago. So one of the things we're doing is we're taking these um, floats, these ocean-going floats, which are also confusingly called Argos, which are basically almost torpedo shape, and they've got an air bladder inside them. And we're going to put those over the side of a ship, and they basically get a GPS fix of where they are. They then drop down, they, they, they change the air pressure in the bladder, they drop down to a certain depth, say a thousand meters, and then drift with the ocean currents. And as they go, they measure the saltiness, the temperature of the oceans. And then periodically, they'll come back to the surface and beam their measurements back to the satellites. And you can follow these as they go. And there's loads of them around, in the, um, around the world, but there's not many in the Southern Ocean. So we're dropping about 20 of these in the Southern Ocean. And these will be floating around for five, 10, maybe longer years, making continuous measurements, which we can then compare to what uh, Mawson took 100 years ago. So it's an amazing resource. So we're working with some of the US institutions who are providing a free of charge because we're going to this part of the world. So those are the things that just technology allows you to do so much more that in the old days you'd have to send a team down there and, and they'd be locked in the ice for years on end. So it, it's, a, it's remarkable what you can do.